Um, to give you some sense of my credentials, as it were, to have anything to say to any of you about marketing um, or business, this business, signposter.com, was launched in March this year. By the end of the year, the business will have turned over more than half a million pounds. This is a business that works solely in advertising and deals solely with small to medium-sized enterprises. So that does, I hope, give you some hope that if we can do it, well, so could anybody else. Okay. Um, how many people amongst your groups of friends on Facebook actually know exactly what it is that your business does? If it's fewer than 10, you need to change that and you need to use your social networking profile to help to promote your business because it's free. So that is a way, if you like, not just of using your net network, your own individual network, but, but detonating it, putting a bomb under it and making it actually work hard for you. Now a similar piece of thinking applies to uh, your existing businesses. Existing businesses all have uh, a number of people with whom they do business, don't they? They, they have clients, customers. Now, Typically, in, in any, uh, any, any marketing director would tell you that there are, if you like, three different levels or types of client. You have uh, a customer. A customer is a person defined uh, as being a person who has bought something from you once. Those, those are good. You need people to buy something from you once, otherwise you go out of business. Um, ideally, you want to move that, that person, that customer, up the, the food chain, if you like, of, of customers, up the hierarchy, to, to level two, which is that that customer becomes a client. That is that they do business with you regularly. They come back and buy more and more from you. And that's, that's an obvious step. The third but most important step in, in marketing, and again, this is all free, is to turn your, the people that, have, that were customers that have become clients, you want to try and turn your clients into what marketeers call advocates. And advocates are people who go around talking to their friends and to their contacts, to people that they meet in the ordinary course of doing business and tell them about your business. And they do that because they're impressed. They like your business, they enjoy doing business with you, so they go out there and they tell their friends what a good meal they had in your restaurant, what a great haircut they got in your hairdressing salon, uh, or what a fantastic job you did of delivering their uh, parcels and packages, whatever your type of, of business is. So those are the, those are the three, three main things that you should be trying to encourage. It's a, it's a question of moving your existing clients upscale a little bit, a little bit further. So those are just some, those are just some basic things that, that people should be doing for free. There are some things that um, I can't really tell because I don't know enough about your individual businesses, but I'll give you an example of one very, very clever idea I saw in Edinburgh um, just a couple of weeks back. There's a restaurant, I think it's in Hanover Street, a French restaurant, tiny little place, and they have a delivery van for whatever reason, presumably to deliver things. Uh, instead of doing what an ordinary business owner would do and park their delivery van right outside their premises in Hanover Street, they don't. They park it round the corner. And the reason that they park it round the corner is of course that it gives them two shop fronts. So instead of just having one shop front, they use their van effectively as, a, as another shop front. And they also make sure that they park their van, which is all liveried up with a logo, with an address, with what the, what the, what the uh, business is all marked clearly on it, they move that van around central Edinburgh. And if you don't believe me, you can go and see it for, for yourself. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very common sight. And there will be tiny little changes that you can make to your own business, just like that simple change that will make more people more aware of what it is that you are trying to do. And that is marketing in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now, as, as promised, about advertising. Um, and before I do, this is a very good example of how advertising works. The slide before you saw was just a company name and a, a logo with what you might call a strap line, a line that explains very, very simply what the, what the business of the company is. Well, that's an advertisement, so it's just the recreation of the company's logo and what the company does. 
that is a classic piece of advertising and <coughs> if, if all advertising lived up to that standard then it would all be good and it would all work. There is a, a classic rule in the world of advertising which I think was uh, invented by a guy called Robin White who's the chairman of the advertising agency WCRS. Um, that advertising agency used to be called White Collins Rutherford Scott and Partners Matthews Mark Antonio. Imagine answering the telephones there. Robin White came up with the simple aphorism for advertising that if an advertisement does not first work as a poster, then it is not an advertisement. Think about that for a second. If whatever piece of marketing literature it is that you are preparing does not first work as a poster, then it is not effective advertising. Everything that you do that's related to marketing must first work as a poster, like this one behind me. And the reason that that works as a poster is that everyone in the room can read it, even from several feet back. It has very few words on it. It tells you exactly what the, the, what the business of the company is, and it tells you how to access it, signposter.com. One of the reasons that we rather like poster advertising is that posters are all around us at all times of day. Um, people are increasingly um, asking why it is that Signposter has been so effective. And I told you that before the end of this year, we'll have turned over half a million pounds. That's a drop in the ocean by comparison to the amount of money that businesses in Great Britain, uh, in the United Kingdom, sorry, spend on poster advertising. These businesses go, go about life by spending a billion pounds a year. And why do they do that? Well, for the very simple reason that it, it works. And that's why they come back and back. That's why you see the same brands advertising on the same type of billboards up and down uh, the major city centers, up and down our high streets, and on the major perimeter roads in our, in our cities. The other reason that posters are working increasingly more effectively is that our lives have changed quite a lot. Um, when television was new, and that's clearly some way back, um, television was the exciting medium. Now that our lives have changed and been improved by technology, we spend less time indoors. We don't need to spend so long doing the dishes. We don't need to spend so long doing the washing and ironing, for instance, because there are improved technologies that make those jobs faster and easier to have. Um, 180,000 people pass the average poster site in, uh, in a two-week period, um, which is a very, very fast way of getting, that's just one poster site in one location. So if you wanted to tell 180,000 people quickly, repeatedly, about what you do, then the way that you would be encouraged to go about that in, in the world of advertising would be through posters. The, 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 other thing, the other things to bear in mind uh, when talking about advertising is that, uh, again, as I've, I've sort of said once before, but I really do mean it, I can't know enough about your businesses to be, to be able to make individual recommendations. Only you can do that. So you know what your business is, you know about its geographical location, you know about its clients, and you need to use that information in order to drill down and to do exactly what Joan was suggesting earlier on, and that's to spend whatever your marketing budgets may be wisely. What I guess I'm really talking about is targeting. Um, it's a little bit like trying to hit a golf ball, unless you aim at that golf ball very, very carefully. Trust me. When you drop your swing, you will not hit it unless you have aimed at your target. Same thing applies in marketing. Unless you've set yourself a target, you cannot possibly expect to hit it. So nar narrow down who exactly your audience is. How are you most likely to build your business up? Um, a very, very s simple way of thinking about it is, is that the person that is most likely to be your next customer is an existing customer. So if you base your targeting on people that you have already successfully done business with, then your marketing for the future will, will make the most out of whatever, your, whatever the budget that you may have available to you.